Recently, I started doing some videos on ship models. People seem to be liking that. So with that in mind, it should come as very little surprise to anyone who knows me and my taste that I would have a model of the Imperial Japanese Navy battleship Yamato. Like the others I've done, this is 1700 scale die cast, and this is from Forces of Valor. I like the 1700 scale because they're large enough to really give detail. They also offer moving guns, rotating turrets. If you go to the smaller scale, say 1 in 1000 down to 1 in 1250, you mostly lose that. But with that said, even amongst those who aren't really in the Japanese history, the Yamato is a very famous ship. It was pretty much the largest, most heavily armed, and one of the most heavily armored battleships. Kind of a culmination of something that began with HMS Dreadnought. It was really the end of the whole battleship generation. Along with the Iowa class, the Bismarck, and so forth. And it was a massive ship. And it served nearly throughout the entirety of the war in the Pacific from 1941 through 1945. And this really dates back to 1934 when Japan formally left the League of Nations, meaning they opted out of the Washington Treaty, which put a cap, a limit, on the size of naval warships, especially battleships. And so after that, they began drawing up plans for a heavy battleship. And Japan wasn't fooling themselves. They knew they could never match the number and the might of the American Navy. So they were hoping to make three heavy battleships, each of which could take on multiple standard battleships and basically just win Japan a spot in the Pacific. They needed a larger sphere of influence. They wanted control over rubber production, over petroleum production, and basically to shake America and Britain loose, or I should say the Commonwealth loose, kind of making a new zone for Japan. And this had been a long time in coming, really, for 80 years since the Meiji Restoration when Japan started to rapidly modernize. So by March of 1937 the design was pretty well finalized and the ship was ordered into production and it was built in secret. In fact they had to modify their existing dry docks to have them big enough and deep enough to, um, to build the thing. And the keel was laid down on November 4th of that year, 1937. And construction would take place throughout the rest of the decade. And it was initially ready for launch in August of 1940. And then for the next year, it would be 
outfitted, equipped with what it would need. And then it began sea trials in October, running through November of 1941. Now, it wasn't actually slated to be commissioned until the beginning of 1942, but things were going smooth enough, and the war in the Pacific had begun, of course, in December and seven, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. To it, it was commissioned early on December 16th and made ready. And then on February 12th, 1942, it was made the flagship of Admiral Yamamoto's combined fleet. It would be used in a few exercises and training drills that spring. And then it would leave the home islands on May 27th. And Japan expected a lot out of this ship. Because it was a beast. It was nearly 840 feet long at the waterline and just under 863 feet long at the deck. It was nearly 130 feet wide at its widest point. It carried up to seven reconnaissance aircraft. Originally E4Ns, later E8Ns. These could be launched using two steam catapults. It was heavily armored to say the least with anywhere from a foot and a half to over two foot of armor in different locations. It had a minimum crew of 2,500, standard crew of 2,800, and it could transport well over 3,000 people. It had four propellers, and it was capable of going over 30 miles per hour. But of course, its biggest thing was its armament. It had nine 18-inch guns. One turret in the back with three. And two turrets in the front with a total of six. It also had a dozen medium 6-inch guns used for offense. It had a dozen 5-inch guns used more for defense and even, in some cases, anti-aircraft. It had many more 1-inch guns used for defense an anti-aircraft and it had several 13 millimeter machine guns or cannon mounts just for good measure it and its sister ship the Mushashi really would be the most heavily armed, the largest battleships to ever be created. When fully laden, they would displace just under 72,000 tons. Even when they were light loaded, it was nearly 65,000. Steel and more steel. Mm -hmm. 
lots of gunpowder and honestly it was fast for its size which also meant it was thirsty consumed a lot of petroleum and its 18 inch guns while impressive were also a bit of a odd caliber and pretty resource intensive to feed themselves but when this took to the seas in May of 1942, Japan was effectively winning the war in the Pacific. And Yamamoto really warned everyone that they needed to win the war in six months, in under a year for sure. He was not a fool. So with that said... Yeah, the Yamoto and the Musashi would sail into history. The Yamato was in service, was in theater in time for the Battle of Midway. It was even used as Admiral Yamamoto's command ship. However, it was located too far from the fighting, too far from the action, to actually take part, to actually fire. So while it was there, it did nothing. And as you know, the Battle of Midway was the beginning of the turning point for the war in the Pacific. On its way back to the home islands, a U.S. sub spotted the Yamoto and fired several torpedoes at her, but it was able to evade them and made it back unscathed. But the Japanese soon discovered that they made this very expensive, very impressive, very powerful battleship, but were unwilling to risk it, or maybe even unable. So, honestly, not a whole lot happened for the rest of 1942. It kind of hung around, went on a few patrols, spent a lot of time in port. And that's really it. I mean, I'm trying to think. There's really, I mean, you can read the histories. I mean, it, it was around, but it didn't really do much. Then, on February 11th, a year after it had been commissioned as the flagship, it was replaced in this role by Musashi. And it was reassigned to the Second Fleet. It also would go through a series of upgrades, namely to its radar, and also anti-aircraft abilities. Over time, they would actually get rid of some of its older 5-inch guns, replacing them with more effective mounts. And then, really, beginning in the spring of 1943, Yamoto and Musashi would start to be used as cargo <laughs> ships, troop transports, freighters. They would be assigned to deliver troops to the Philippines. Then they would be sent to Malaya. They would be around during the Battle of the Philippine Sea, 
It would also be around during the Marianas turkey shoot. But Yamato just didn't really do anything. It was often kept out or easily deterred. It's worth saying that on Christmas Day of 1943, a U.S. sub did spot it and was able to successfully punch a hole in it with a torpedo. It really was never any, in any danger of sinking. A repair tender was near, helped it get back to port. So it actually spent a good chunk of January and into February of 1944 in dry dock being repaired. Then it would uh, go out again. And throughout 1944 would again be used from time to time as a troop transport and kind of ferry ship. And really by this point the Japanese fleet was suffering from a lack of petroleum. Again this was one reason they started the war in the first place. US submarines and destroyers and PT boats had really taken a toll on their tanker fleet. So these were kept near Japan's oil sources and not allowed to go too far out in the ocean just because they couldn't afford to uh, to sail them. They were also starting to run very low on 18-inch shells, but since Yamato wasn't really firing many in anger anyway, Again, 1944 was looking to be a pretty uneventful year for Japan's very impressive battleship. Finally, in October of 1944, as the U.S. set about retaking the Philippines, things heated up for both battleships. The Yamato would exchange fire really for the only time during the Battle of Leyte Gulf. The whole incident with Taffy 3, which is quite, um, quite interesting. But before that, it would engage with the carrier Essex trading blows. It would re-damage, but not severely so. On the other hand, its sister ship, Mishashi, would take several bombs and actually go to the bottom. Now, the incident with Taffy 3 is really worth reading. A small... Convoy escort group of escort carriers, destroyers, and destroyer escorts protecting the landing force honestly turned away the Yamato. The Yamato engaged and it was trading rounds, even doing some pretty good damage to one of the carriers. But then a wide torpedo spread caused Yamato to veer off and also just convinced them that they were up against a true full carrier group and not just a light squadron. Again, it's that Japanese reluctance to really risk the Yamato. They'll only now use it as we're getting into the desperate days of the war. But even then, at the first sign of real danger, they would uh, they would pull it out. It would return to port 
on November 25th of 1944. And then in January of 1945, it would perform patrol of the Japanese Sea. Before once again being used for some transport duties in February. An escort. Actually, on March 19th, the Yamato was caught out when an American task force raided a uh, Japanese naval base, damaging to some degree around 16 ships, including a few hits on Yamato herself, but it mostly evaded bombs directed at it. And then Japanese aircraft actually pushed the Americans back before they could really set their teeth in. So, only minor damage. And through all this time, the Yamato, as we returned to port, would have its older weaponly, weaponry upgraded or just replaced, giving it new and better radar. They would also consider reinforcing its armor, although not much happened. They did reinforce its ability to fight fires on board, removing a lot of flammable material and whatnot. But the end was near. 1945, April 1st, America attacks and begins to invade Okinawa, one of the Japanese home islands. And this, of course, would have an immediate and drastic response from the Japanese command. known as Operation Tengo. The Japanese Admiralty and the Japanese government knew that the invasion was coming. So, what was known as the Special Surface force was formed around Yamato. You would basically lead nine other ships, one cruiser, and eight destroyers on a one-way a suicide essentially one big kamikaze mission. To that end, Yamato would take on board as much ammunition as it could hold, but as little fuel as possible, and it would leave port on April 6th. Its orders were to get to Okinawa beach itself become essentially a fixed fortification that couldn't be sunk a cannon battery and reinforce the defense of Okinawa and fight till it could not fight any longer its other ships in the fleet had similar orders and of course, pilots were authorized to kamikaze as well. So not exactly a hopeful mission. He was also laden down with crew to assist in the defense. With over 3,000 people on board. And the Americans knew they were coming. For one, they had long since broken the Japanese code. 
and for another two American submarines while they could not engage the task force themselves due to the situation they were able to confirm that they was on its way so basically a two line defense was set up carriers would launch dive bombers and torpedo bombers and then battleships would be kept as a second line reserve if anything slipped through so early on the morning of April 7, a couple of patrol planes found the Yamato and shadowed it. The Yamato did try to shake them off by using anti-aircraft fire. Also by making a very zig, very zag course. But the American plane stuck with her. And then around 11 o'clock, F6F Hellcats started circling and you know, kind of strafing the fleet, basically trying to draw off any air defense, any fighters that they might have. Turns out they didn't really have any, so the Wildcats didn't have a lot to do. But then, at half past 12, 12.30, the attack began. The first wave commenced 280 different dive bombers and torpedo bombers would be used and the first hits on the Yamato would happen about 12.37 p.m. Very quickly three to five dive bombs would hit the battleship, taking out the radar, some of the anti-aircraft guns, some of the smaller guns. Later some dive bombs would take out a turret. And then, still in the first wave, it would be hit by a torpedo. The second wave would start up around 1 o'clock, 1300 hours. This one would be mostly torpedoes. It would be hit by three to four torpedoes on one side and then another torpedo on the other side. The third wave would commence at 1.40 p.m., 13.40 hours. More bombs, more torpedoes. Now up to the third wave, the Yamato was damaged. Top speed had been reduced to, from 31 miles per hour down to about 21. It had about a 10 degree list, but it wasn't critical. It had lost some of its fighting ability. Also, a lot of the planes had been strafing the decks, taking out crew and knocking out some of the gun emplacements. But she was still afloat, and damage control was working. Those steps they had shaken to keep fires from spreading were really paying off. But then the third wave. We have a couple more bombs hit it. A couple more torpedoes. Most critically, two of the bombs hit the superstructure. And at least one torpedo hit amidships, which led to power being discontinued a little after 2 o'clock, a little after 1400 hours. And she was in bad shape. Top speed had dropped to 19 miles per hour. And the list was getting worse. Now they're starting to fight a pitch battle. Fires are starting to rage. And there starts to be concern that... The magazines for the turrets might explode. Now typically, they would flood the magazines with seawater. Eliminating this danger. But the pumps would go out, meaning they could not do this. Meaning, they were in a whole host of trouble. And then, just because, a fourth wave came around 14, 
15 or so. Couple more bombs, couple more torpedoes. Bob's your uncle. It's over. The list gets very bad. It starts to heal over at about 2.20 in the afternoon. A lot of the guns are falling off the decks. The list is so bad. It capsizes a couple of minutes later. Still floating, but then one of the magazines does explode. And it is a huge explosion. Over three miles high in the air. And this just rips the ship apart. Breaking it in two. And it very quickly sinks. And the problem with it sinking so quickly, it created suction. Taking what few crew were able to get off the ship and into the ocean down with her. In total, most all of the crew perished with the Yamato. And the rest of the special task force, and trust me, when you hear something called special in World War II Japan, it's not special as in special forces, it's special as in our cat Earl, who probably needs a football helmet. It's usually ad hoc. Anyway, of the nine other ships, five had already been destroyed, so only four remained. The, those ships picked up what few survivors they could and turned tail away from Okinawa and back to the mainland. And that was it. The Yamato, like the Musashi, six months before, was at the bottom of the ocean. But, I will say this. It took a hell of a beating. It was hit by no less than 11 torpedoes and perhaps as many as 13. And it was hit by at least 6 dive bombs and maybe as many as 9. Not to mention all the strafing and other small things. And a lot of the near misses from dive bombs created pressure and vortexes around it that started to buckle the already damaged armor, even doing further. So it took a hell of a beating. If Japan had not been so reluctant to deploy this in combat, I'm not going to say it would have changed the fate of the war, but I think it was a lot sturdier and could put up with a lot more than they gave it credit for. Kind of ironically, it did exactly what they wanted it to do. It had the ability to go up against other superior numbers. I mean, the attack began at 12.30 in the afternoon with the better part of 300 aircraft, and it was still afloat an hour and a half later. In fact, it wasn't until at least the third, maybe in the, even the fourth wave, that its fate was sealed. It could have probably survived the first two waves even though it had been hit by multiple torpedoes. So a very impressive vessel. Of course, the evasion of Okinawa was successful. The Americans did take back the Philippines. And that was it. So even though this was commissioned right after Pearl Harbor, it waited nearly three years to see combat, and it was only in its last six months of life that it actually was really used. Most of its service was actually used as a troop transport, and of course as a flagship, a morale boost, that kind of thing. Interesting history. At least I think so. You know the model. Hopefully I've got something on camera for you. The bottom is all metal. The top is all plastic for the detail level. You really couldn't do 
the top and metal and get the detail levels you need. Like I said at the beginning, the turrets do move. Even some of the smaller guns do pivot and rotate. And on several of these Forces of Valor ships, the radar rotate. Pretty impressive for all of that. When you get them, they're pretty well assembled. The only thing you really need to add is the stuff below the water line, so your uh, rudder and propellers. But all your top stuff, the hard stuff, is already on there. Quality is quite good for considering how fine some of the pieces are, and that these are not. $200 models, you have to consider that they're, you know, $50, $50 models. They do come with the stand, which is partial metal. These are metal. The bottom part's faux wood plastic. You also get the waterline display, like you've seen in the other videos. So if you'd rather show it kind of like it's Sailing the seas, you can set it in the plastic waterline display. And they also come with a pretty neat booklet, giving the details of the ship. So not a bad package, all in all. But yeah, people seem to like my first couple of videos on warships, so I thought I'd do another one. Let me know what you think. And, uh, yeah, maybe I'll see what else I can dig up for you. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, it's a lot of fun to do these. So I appreciate you staying with me. As always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to, check out some of my other videos, maybe. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.